Hey gang, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and if not, good luck. This is where we talk about all things health, wellness, body image, weight loss, all of those fun things, but also life in general. The videos on this channel can help heal more than 90% of any health, wellness, or body image challenge. So please share the channel. But today we have Remy. Hello. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine. We decided to do a mukbang, but a hot pot mukbang because that's interesting so what have we got here we have our varieties of choices here we have our bok choy of some veggies we have some nice shrimp tiger shrimp we have some fish balls most folks just don't seem to have a taste for testicles no more assorted we have the beef balls ribeye roll. rib beef rolls and then just another fish ball. Well, the trick is you've got to clip them off way up high. How does it work? I don't get it. So basically, what you do is everything is pretty much frozen or fresh. So you just grab what you want to eat and throw it in the soup. You can see there's two halves of this pot. One is usually for normal broth and the other one could be spicy for those people who want to be a little bit adventurous. Spicy! <laughs> <laughs> or for those people who are a little bit more Blech. yes <laughs> who wants to keep like no meat don't touch anything yeah i'm one of those crazies that doesn't like that food touching because it's repulsive it could be just like seafood here meat here it all depends on your preference whatever you want that's the name of the game noodles must not be forgotten yes we have some nice lovely braised noodles everybody like the noodle at least but yeah, so we're gonna do a Q&A. If you have any questions for future videos that you want to know about, doesn't matter if it's health, wellness, body image, weight loss, or questions about me, anything else you might wanna know, just comment below the questions because we will be doing more Q&A. So what do I do with this? Pop it in whichever one you want. That's what she said. And then we'll retrieve it with the basket or <laughs> our chopsticks. Uh, what kind of sauce like to dip your okay i have a stir fry sauce my mom used to use it when i was a kid this is way before i was into health so it's not so healthy it's your average not so healthy stir fry sauce but then i have a healthy stir fry sauce that i like to use it's teriyaki what you got over there i have just a simple worcestershire sauce with a little bit of oil and soy sauce I think so you big pronounced big. it right yeah, that's not the way you say it. Well, how do you say it? Well, I try not to, but if I have to, I say it very quickly. Pass me the Worcestershire sauce. But when you pronounce it slowly, it highlights your stupidity. <laughs> I went to England to that place called that, and they kept saying Worcester. And I was like, how many unnecessary letters do you need? That letter is only for the paper, not for the mouth. Like, if you're just call it Worcester? Why not also then have silent numbers? Like I owe you $75. Ah, but the seven is silent. <laughs> but I call it Worcestershire. <laughs> to each their own, but I know there's gonna be people out there who's gonna be like, you're saying it wrong. Like, yeah. Yes, yes, I know. If you know, try to write it below the way it's pronounced. Yeah, kind of break it down <laughs> how it sounds and hopefully that will help. Worcester. These are interesting. Yeah, it doesn't take that long. So it needs a little bit more time. So let's start with question one. Okay. So what got you into health and fitness? That's a deep question. I was very, very, very unhealthy. I was working in emergency health services and I had IBS, PMS, acne, panic, anxiety. Oh my gosh, just all kinds of things were wrong with me and it was just horrible. And I was only in my very early 20s and doctors, oh yeah, eczema, psoriasis. I had gut problems. How do you say that? A heated mess, you know, a mess where heat is applied to it. So what once was a little messy is now even messier. And the doctors just said, well, that's just what happens. And here's a cream for that and a pill for that. And I was like, you know what? That's not just what happens. So I started studying health. And because I didn't have any interest in doing it as a career at all, I kind of had a unique background where I started studying all things. So if people want to do this as a career, normally they learn everything about nutrition or they learn everything about personal training or whatever. But I learned everything but as much as I could. And then after eight years of of education I thought oh my gosh I can really help people all these people going to the doctors with autoimmune diseases and all of these things and so I started just reaching out to people I knew I had some aunts that were you know struggling with a few things and people around me that just you know everyone wants to lose weight these days and everyone was healing a hundred percent and finally I realized I want to do this with all of my time and I did and then it just 
took off so it's been a hundred percent success rate which is amazing but that's only just because it works because i know the things necessary that's very impressive <clears throat> so how long were you studying to get to this point before i started it as a career about eight years and then i just never stopped it's just it's all I want to do all the time. People are going out and doing fun things and I'm studying neuroscience at home. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's always new studies of what is healthy, what is not. Sometimes they get it wrong. Like mm -hmm. the whole like egg situation that it's good, but it's also bad. I know. It's a catch-22 situation, right? Yeah. So with your career in health and all that, what made you want to get into doing YouTube? Because this is obviously something completely new to you. Totally. So YouTube... <laughs> If you knew me, you'd be surprised. Or if you don't know me, maybe you'll be surprised. But I started watching other people's vlogs. Got a smart TV about four years ago. And I started just watching YouTube on the TV. I was like, oh wow, I get YouTube on the TV. Like it was so fancy. And I started watching people's vlogs and I thought that is so much fun. Whoa. What? So I got a camera one day and it took me ages and ages and ages. I was terrified, absolutely terrified of doing it. But finally, I decided to post a video. They're all gonna laugh at you. And it's just so much fun. It's so much fun. Can I interest you in any of this? Yes, of course, thank you. You're welcome. You're gonna have your greens because apparently I've been told several times I don't have enough of it. I know. Did you know calcium comes from greens, not milk? Is that so? There are lots of calcium rich vegetables in the world. One of those things, people always think it's milk, but milk is not the greatest. Is that really all that healthy? Yeah, human beings were not meant to ingest milk after the ages of two to three years old when we naturally stopped breastfeeding. And then as tribes people, there was a very rare, and it was so rare back then, occasion where a baby wouldn't be nourished enough or whatnot. And so the mother would take the milk from the cow, but we were never supposed to be having cow milk anyways. Cow's milk is baby calf growth fluid. Everything in that white liquid the hormones, the lipids, the proteins, the sodium, the growth factors, the IGF, all, every one of those is meant to blow that calf up to a great big cow. It wouldn't be there. And women eat it and it stimulates their tissues and it gives women breast lumps. It makes the uterus get big and they get fibroids and they bleed and they get hysterectomies and they need mammograms. It gives guys man boobs. Cow's milk is the lactation secretions of a large bovine mammal who just had a baby. So the body produces an enzyme to digest milk until until the baby is two or three and then the body just naturally stops producing it. Um, what do you know? Is that how some people get become lactose intolerant? I'm lactose intolerant and all of a sudden I start to get sick from it. Is that just the same thing, just in a more extreme way? Mm hmm Basically, we just don't have what we need to digest it, generally. Which is a shame because I love ice cream on a hot day. Is it uh, pizza? Yeah. I'm growing out of it. I'm not I sure if you can pizza. grow out of it. I'll never grow out of pizza. <laughs> I stopped eating cheese and then I just realized I don't miss it. I beg your pardon? After a while, you just don't really miss it. Is there a particular food that you kind of didn't like back when as a kid or a teenager and now you kind of like, I can't believe I said no to this. Horseradish. Really? So random. Spinach. But then there's other things. So I loved escargot as a kid. I absolutely loved it. Escargot? Yeah. Oh my, I had it once. It's okay. I'm happy that I had it, but. I would never eat it again now that I know what it is. <laughs> what, they didn't tell you what it was? No, and I was little and I never knew what it was. And then one day my dad picked one up and it unfurled on the fork and I was out. I was like, what is that? Oh, people. I just... <laughs> <laughs> people away. These fish squares look good. Yeah. Yeah. Yummy. You should never get noodles on a first date. Terrible idea. Why is that? <laughs> They're so messy like flopping off the chin or get them on a first date because if they stay with you after they see how messy of an eater you are you won i was gonna say that <laughs> sometimes you just gotta go straight out of the gate to see who they truly are because that's the thing about the first dates it's a bit of an act you want to be on your best behavior you want to show a good impression and all yeah. that how much of them is truly them and how much is kind of an act yeah you know what i like to do on first dates, I like to take the guy to Nightmares in Niagara Falls. Basically, it's Ontario's scariest haunted house kind oh, of you're thing. You're evil. <laughs> and then I can see what the person is like. Right? Yeah. If they turn into a pussy and push me in front or run away crying, well then. 
<laughs> but I'm fascinated. Please tell me, why does Jason kill these teenagers? Why is Freddy Krueger haunting these people? I was fascinated by it. Here's Johnny. That's cool. Yeah, they're mind. Yeah, what made them tick? It could be just simple like, oh, they're just evil for the sake of being evil. But the more interesting villains who are out there who are a little methodical, I think the ones who think what they're doing is right makes them more of a gray area. It brings good debate and conversation. It depends on the way you think about it. And that's the magic of movies when you can go out and talk about it. It could be just a simple popcorn flick, shut off your mind, just be entertained, or you could be enthralled by it. You want to learn more about this world, these characters. Now, obviously, keeping it the same topic, you're into horror. What got you into horror? <laughs> That's such a good question. I myself am strange and unusual. My followers are gonna learn all kinds of weird things about me today. Hey, people want to know. <laughs> That's true. My dad was very much into horror, and I have an older brother. He's three years older than me, and so I was brought into horror at a very young age. I think I saw Freddy Krueger when I was five. That's a start. Yeah. So I grew up with my dad every night before I went to bed watching The Outer Limits, The Twilight Zone, and Unsolved Mysteries. I knew the phone number for Unsolved Mysteries before I knew my own phone number as a child. Yep. I still remember it. Did you know they brought it back? Mm -hmm. I have not watched it yet, but I'm super excited because I love criminology. I love puzzles. I love puzzles. Love that. And then when you get a piece and you're like, yes. It's so rewarding, right? <laughs> it's so good. It's a way to control the chaos. Life is messy. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Sorry to break the news to you. Life's just random. There's nothing we can do to control anything. But when you complete a puzzle, when you finish it, you know that you have made all the right choices. No matter how many wrong pieces you try to fit into a wrong place, but at the very end, everything makes one perfect picture. Like I said before, I'm not a fan of horror, so I don't have the stomach. Because some people are like, hey, why don't you become a crime scene photographer? Because I'm into photography. Oh, but the yeah. problem is, I don't think it can handle the gruesome scene. Mm -hmm. It could not be gruesome at all. It could be just the scene. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can handle it. My heart for the poor person will be there. Yeah. be so traumatized. But I had a very strong stomach growing up because of all the horror movies. So I was going into dispatch where you do ride outs with paramedics going around. And that job is what gave me a weak stomach and why I stuck with dispatch instead of being out on the trucks because oh my gosh when you see things in real life you're like i don't want to see that again <laughs> Oh, yeah. Not only are you, you get a phone call of someone in trouble and you have to dispatch someone, but you have to stay on the phone, you hear the stress yeah. of the person panicking. I don't think I'd handle it. And it's really hard to teach someone how to do CPR on the phone. Like you're not there, you can't see what's happening. And it's so stressful because you know how to help the person, but you don't know if they're doing it right or, oh, oh my gosh, it's stressful. So you said your first horror movie was Freddy Krueger. Apparently mine, so I've been told, I don't remember it. You don't remember it. No, because I was traumatized. Aw, oh, good thing your brain forgot it for you then. Terminator 2. Six or seven, I can't remember the exact story. There's a scene where the Terminator's at the bar, a guy grabs a knife, stabs him, no pain. Grabs a knife, stabs the guy, pins him <laughs> to the pool table. <laughs> Apparently, I wept. Many years later, Terminator 2 being my favorite movie of all time. Me. So many people love that movie. The best CGI is when you don't know it's CGI. Yeah, it's so cool. The Lion King to me was eye candy watching it. And it is a bait. They say it's a live action, but everything is CGI, so is it? <gasps> That's a really good debate. What do you think? Comment below on what you think about that. You know what? About CGI, what I think is I have so much admiration and respect for all the animatronic stuff that was made. Like movies like Labyrinth and Never Ending Story and oh my gosh, just all of those movies from when we were kids in the 80s were so well done. So the behind the scenes of Labyrinth was really cool because Jim Henson showed all about the puppetry and how they actually made everything. Really good. Sorry. Talking with my mouth full, but hey, it's a mukbang, so I guess we do. <laughs> My question is, what made you want to do a mukbang? Because already of that, I have no idea. What is the origins of mukbang? <laughs> okay, so I saw this girl on YouTube. Very gorgeous. I love her. Her name is Megan McCollum. I'll link her below. And she was eating exorbitant amounts of food. And she talked about conspiracy theories or just interesting stuff. And there was always a new subject. And then the health field, like what I do with the health and wellness, coupled with eating, is a very popular YouTube subject just because you know healthy people aren't necessarily known for eating all the stuff I eat all the stuff I eat you know I'm not 
restrictive with my diet. I love all the unhealthy food too. But anyway, I thought, you know what? That would be fun and interesting. Why don't we do a mukbang? And this is, I've never done this before, the hot pot. I have no idea what it was like. I've never seen it. So I thought, how cool would that be? What's well, such a funny thing. And, hey, let's do a mukbang. A bang or bong? Bong. Bong? Okay. I actually looked that up. How it's pronounced mukbang. No, if I can't pronounce it, I don't know eat it. It sounds very like, Oh, North Americans call it mukbang, but I don't know. I, I looked it up and it said mukbang, so we'll just go with that. But yeah, it's interesting. So Megan, she has all kinds of videos and the stuff she eats is incredible. And you know what I think is funny? People that are on diets or restrictive eating patterns or whatnot, maybe they just get off on... Get off the well, maybe not so much, but... <laughs> Maybe they just really like watching people eat because they don't feel like they should or they can or whatever. Well, it's one of those things like the ASMR situation that you hear yeah. like the sound of the crinkle of paper, mm -hmm. the boiling of the water. It could be anything particular. But I think it's like an ASMR for your eyes just watching this delicious food, which is torture because it's like the food network. You watch yeah. it, it looks totally amazing. But then you look at it and you're like, oh, I'm eating a sandwich. Don't ever <laughs> watch that with a hangover. You're going to want to eat everything. Everything. I've done that Noted. Before. <laughs> Here's something funny. Mm -hmm. I've never been hungover before. Oh ever. my gosh, I'm so jealous. I'm half Asian, half Chinese, and mm -hmm. half Spanish. So my Asian side, you see when Asians drink, they get red. They tend to get really hot. I heard it has some type of allergic reaction that the Asians have to alcohol. I get very warm when I drink sometimes. Is this what being slightly intoxicated feels like? Because I've never been. Oh my gosh, I went through a period of my life. I drank because I guess I was going through a lot, like I'm, I went through a divorce, I moved across the country, I moved back across the country, I had an eating disorder, I was going through all kinds of stuff. And okay. so I drank and all of a sudden I felt happier and I was like, oh, so then I had another drink and then I felt even happier. And then before you know it, it's a very slippery slope and there's too many drinks. So you get yourself out of that because it's no good. Human beings were not designed to ingest alcohol. You are breaking my heart. What happens is your gut is knit together like that. But when you drink alcohol, it spreads open and you get little holes through from your gut into your bloodstream. And so then everything you eat while you're drinking, you end up developing a slight intolerance to, and it takes 10 whole days for your gut to heal back over. If you're gonna drink, make sure you have healthy fats and always, always drink water. I think that's one of the things I find really fascinating about you and just enjoy <laughs> is how- Random health knowledge. How much knowledge you know. It was your birthday this year. You had a couple of wines, you were having a good time, line dancing and all that. And I asked you a health question, it like a switch. It like- Well, let me tell you about the health thing. <laughs> In my head, I'm like, I can't tell if she's telling the truth or she's just flying this out of her butt. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, my brain knows way too much about health. Well, I guess you can't know too much, but it knows definitely a lot about health. I'm a beef eater. I smell like beef. <laughs> Obviously, you love your wine and all that. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite type of wine? You know, I can't remember what it's called, but I took a picture of it with my phone that I'll put on the screen here. But it's organic. You should always have organic alcohol if you're gonna drink alcohol because it's so toxic for the body. But I isn't alcohol, especially wine, it's supposed to be organic? It's supposed to be, because people are like, oh, red wine's good for you. And you'll see that a lot at different places, claiming that wine is good for you. Yeah, I've heard that before. Wine is good for you if it's pre-1945. So where are you gonna find that? And it's probably gonna cost you a billion dollars to buy a bottle of it. But 1945 is the year they started using all the chemicals and preservatives and yucky things in the processing of wine. So wine is not healthy for you. The ill health outweighs any health benefit that it would have had. Bummer. Touched it, sorry. Cody! <laughs> but it, it, it's gonna be cooked. <laughs> it's gonna be sterile. And the amount of times we sanitize these days. Oh my mm. god, I'm probably smell like Mr. Clean himself. <laughs> So here's a good question. The rumor is that red wine or white wine is really healthy to have. Mm -hmm. I have a good friend, Josh, his parents drink a glass of red wine, small, maybe the size of this cup here, mm -hmm. every meal they have for dinner. Maybe they have another one depending on how the night, maybe it's the weekend, they'll have a second. But I've been told that having that with a meal is healthier for their system, the blood and all that. I'm not, I'm not sure about the science on that, but I believed it. Now, here's the question I have for you. We're moving wine. What is the next alcoholic drink that is 
the healthiest, Ooh. next healthiest. Next healthiest is actually a very, very high quality tequila, like one of the most expensive ones you can find. I don't actually have a name, I just know that you have to go very high quality tequila. Really? Or some vodkas are made with potatoes over wheat, and a lot of vodkas are made with wheat. So potato vodka and very, very high priced tequila, and then organic beer and organic wine follows. This some serious gourmet shit. Interesting, but it's the truth. Really? And that beats out rice wine that has a sake? Oh my gosh, sake! Okay, I'm gonna link a video below that's really funny, and it's Blake Shelton having sake with um, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon! Yes, I love that. It's so funny. Can we get some more of that rice wine? <laughs> but yeah, no, I had sake. It's not bad. I'm an occasional drinker. You must okay. get buzzed real quick. <laughs> I'm a person who I don't need to be intoxicated or drunk to have fun. Yeah, see? Yeah. My family is crazy, but it's never a dull moment with them, right? <laughs> they can have fun. They're not into country music as much as I am. I love country! I want to show off our sweet line dancing moves, but <laughs> like, ah. Uh. Yeah, we can line dance like nobody's business. It's so funny. When we were at this bar, Nashville North, 100,000 years ago, it is long since RIP Nashville. You could be having a conversation out on the patio, and it was just a general thing that everyone would do. But if you knew a song, it wasn't even considered impolite. You'd be like, I know this one, and you're gone. You just run back inside to do it. Hold my beer. And it's just a no. Hold my beer. And it's just a known thing. It's just what we do. And then it's funny when you're at a normal place and you hear a song that you know the steps to, but it's not a dancing place or it's not a line dance place. It's like, ah. I know a few people who that did not stop them. Yeah, I love that. I'm dancing no matter what. I'm gonna go into this corner and do the thing. I remember I did school photography, right? Mm -hmm. So I was set up in the gym stage. Yeah. Behind all the curtains on that. And the class came in to do some exercises. They played music. Obviously, a young grade one or two or something. Footloose came on. I'm like, <laughs> oh no. I'm taking pictures like, must resist line dancing. Oh. <laughs> It's such a happy, catchy song. You cannot either sing along or to move to yeah, it. Yeah, you can't not move to it. I'll take a hold of your soul. When things don't go how you have planned, makes very interesting stories to tell later on, right? It really does. I don't mind if things don't go to plan. <laughs> and I think the best one is when you can laugh about it. I know I had my many setbacks in life, but if you look back at it and kind of laugh at it or kind of learn from it, it's all good, right? Yeah, and you know what? I used to buy concert tickets, and then one of my absolute best friends, Liz, shout out, we would go to these concerts, and we never went to the actual concert. I remember us being on the train, and it was for Tokyo Police Club, and I had originally, oh, yes. I originally bought the tickets for somebody else and then I ended up stuck with him in the end and I remember we're on the train we're going and I looked there and I said you know what I don't really want to go to the concert <laughs> We're already almost there. And I said, do you? And she's like, no, I don't really care. So we ended up finding an amazing pub in Toronto. We played some pool. We ate poutine. We had some drinks. It was the most fun time. And so that's actually happened a few times to me where I bought the tickets. I didn't end up going, but I had a better time. You just can't be all upset when things don't work out. You just gotta, okay, next. Yeah, I had another friend. She loved going out there and, and actually trying, waiting in line. And sometimes I would venture with her because why not? Mm. And I remember waiting in line to see a show. I think it was a Book of Mormon. We didn't win, sadly. But then we ventured around Toronto, took nice pictures and all that. That was fun. That's so fun. I like aimless wandering. I like no agenda. Where are we going? Where are we know. Guess we're being spontaneous. Just see what happens. Yeah, past me wouldn't be uh, like that. Somebody help me! This is a really good winter dinner activity too. You can't go wrong with soup, especially hot pot. And it's uh, fun because you make it to however you want it. Oh yeah, you can have a bunch of ingredients. You can actually have lettuce, mushrooms, endless possibilities. It's like deep frying. You can deep fry anything, but here <laughs> you can cook anything. Cook anything. To each their own, right? <laughs> the bait. I want to know your thoughts about it. Okay. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Ask me about my wiener. <laughs> Comment 
below what you think. I want to see what the majority is. Here's a picture of what I think. You ever been in a situation where you have wieners, but you ran out of hot dog buns, and so you use bread? So you slice the wieners in half, put it on the bread, hot dog sandwich. Hot dog bun, not sandwich. What do you think? Pretty tasty. It's pretty much the same thing. The question of oldest time, is a hot dog a sandwich? A lot of people said no. Did someone have a definition for a sandwich? Yes, I did <gasps> research on that. On Instagram, I asked, and on Facebook, basically, it's pretty much the same thing. A lot of people started to change that subject matter to, it's like a taco. One of our bartender friends says, is there sand in the sandwich? Don't give me that smart alecky shit. But Where then you have to break it down on what is a sandwich. Where did hot dogs originate? The sausage came from probably Italy and the bread came from France and it seems like an American thing to stick the two together like Damn, America. That's what I think. <laughs> American sandwich. In Canada, it's a hot dog. I was trying to find out where it originated, but let's see. Hmm. In the U.S. of A. We're not surprised. We're not surprised. <laughs> of course. The USDA, they say a sandwich is a meat or poultry filling between two slices of bread slash bun or a biscuit. Interesting. So a sandwich has to have meat in it in order to be a sandwich. A sandwich is also defined as a single serving item such as a hamburger, a hot dog, frozen pizza, burrito, chicken, or uh, say a chicken wing. But a chicken wing's not a sandwich. That's a completely different subject matter we're going to get into what? maybe another time. Further research said what considers a sandwich a made on a bun or a bagel on roll or a pita in a wrap or otherwise regardless of a filling or the number of layers. Pizza. Chicken. I'm like... Pizza's not a sandwich. That man's an imposter. But it has to do with layers. That man is the imposter. Mm, there's a slippery slope there. Apparently, there was a case. There can't be two Spider-Men. In Massachusetts, in Worcester County. Full circle, Worcester. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, apparently, there was a situation where two of the same type of uh, companies in the same food court because there are a bit of a competition and there was a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. So there's one sandwich place, a deli, and a burrito place. And the deli, they contract, took the other one in law because they- No, that's a sandwich. And you should be in my food court. That's illegal and all that. So the court read by the Merriam Weber Dictionary and a judge, but basically he states and says in the dictionary, two thin pieces of bread, usually buttered with a thin layer of meat, cheese, or whatever, bread between two breads. Well, makes sense. That's what I always thought it was. What is not considered a sandwich by law, by them, a burrito, a taco, quesadilla, and a hot dog. Okay, quesadilla, you'd think it has two breads, but I guess it doesn't. Not what? really, it's not bread. It's like tortilla. I don't know. Who makes the rules? Oh yeah, sandwich to me means not really cooked. Even though there's lots of cooked sandwiches around, but... <laughs> What's your favorite sandwich out there? There's a turkey sandwich at the casino in Niagara, Canada, and it is amazing. So this little teeny tiny hole in the wall deli inside the casino in Niagara Falls, Ontario. It looks like one of those kind of not so great cafeteria type of things, oh, but yeah. they make the best sandwiches ever. They're like this big. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so ridiculously good. So good. Is it recently priced? Yes. Brandon was saying that this casino had the best sandwich in the history of the world, yada, yada, yada. How can this be that great? I mean, it's a sandwich, but no, come hell or high water, we had to go there and get it. So we went there and got it. I had turkey, he was all about the beef dip. Never had a better turkey sandwich ever. And I can't even tell you why it was so good because I don't know, it was just so good. That's the placebo effect working for you, my friend. So good. And normally when you get your hopes up, you're kind of like, eh, but it was really good. Yeah, there's something more disappointing that it looks good but it's kind of bland kind there's of nothing yeah there's nothing worse than eating something that has like a bazillion calories and then it just sucks <laughs> it's just that was not worth the calories i like reuben sandwiches with the sauerkraut Sorry. and corned beef so and with good. mustard yeah a little bit of mustard <laughs> I feel like mustard has to come on that. <laughs> I used to love mustard when I was younger, but I think I eat so much of it that I don't care for it so much. I think because in summer camp... Mustard PTSD! <laughs> I was in the snack shop there, and the other kids and I would get popcorn, and we'd get mustard and dip in... Uh, what? Oh my god! And dip and eat. It was so good. But now I'm thinking about it now as an adult, I'm like, what in the world was Why I did thinking? I want, why do I want popcorn dipped in mustard? That's so strange. 
Like anything, kids, we do a lot of weird things. I know. What did I do as a kid? Well, I used to just put mustard on slices of bologna, roll up the bologna, eat it like that. Really good. Ew, bologna. Not as an adult. Here's a question for you. What is your favorite guilty pleasure food? For me, Cinnabon. Oh, oh my God. the smell of it. I know. And I give in. You know what's so funny? When you get asked a question like this and you're like, I don't know. But then, you know, I'll wake up at 4 a.m. and be like, crepes with Nutella. <laughs> I honestly, pizza. I'm having a relationship with my pizza. I will eat the entire pizza. Last weekend, I ate an entire medium pizza to my face. So good. But in terms of sweets, chocolate chip cookies. Oh yeah? Hands down. So, I have one last question to ask you. Okay. Obviously, we live in a very digital age and everything is so simple with a simple click, a simple search. I think we're pretty spoiled these days. Yeah. But now, do you find one-on-one -on -one contact with clients a little bit easier or it's not the same because you're not face-to-face -face like you and I? You know, some people are more open not being in person. Like, I think maybe there's an element of they feel more safe because they're not seen. So I find it's different with each person, but generally nowadays with video call, it feels like it's in person because you got the camera. There's something in between you two. Yeah. Literally a screen. Yeah. Literally like a whole city sometimes or half a world. Which is good. Obviously we are living in a very crazy time. I don't need to explain. And I know a lot of people took this opportunity to pretty much get themselves in a healthier state. What could I do and all that. But thanks to the digital age of everything, we did one-on-one -on -one conversations, you did video posts, coaching people. Obviously you do your videos that we can visually see because I'm a visual person. I like to see yeah. what needs to be done, what needs to be shown, right? And everyone learns different. Differently. Some people are hands-on to learn something. Some people are audio. They learn better by hearing. Some people have to see. I'm visual too. Like I remember when I was a kid when the teacher would call out math problems and you'd have to answer. I was screwed. <laughs> I need the pen and the paper and to be able to see it. Think harder. I'm trying. My dad said his favorite calculator is an abacus. That's some old-fashioned stuff there. Holy the rain. Abacus? Is yeah. that like the, the bees? Yes. That's hilarious. I went to Manhattan once and in Chinatown, it's really cool there. You legitimately feel like you are in old school of China. The shop owners, whoever they are, people that you check out with at all the little shops in Chinatown, use that little thing and they're so fast. They're like Sometimes it just clicks. Some people are just so, it comes easy to them. They can figure this out. Just give me a normal calculator. I probably will solve it eventually. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Three to four to never. <laughs> so what? The worst Three to four to never. I think the worst that was so funny. The worst questions could be like, if train A leaves at 3.40 a.m., train B leaving from this city at 6.40 p.m., where would they intersect? I no, how do you calculate something like that? I love the math problems. It's like so and so buys 48 watermelons, and it's like <laughs> it's hailing. That's hail. It's getting loud, but that's okay. We'll just add that to the list of crazy 2020. <laughs> Yeah, 2020 is hilarious. I saw this meme online that was saying the reason for all of this is because somebody time traveled and they messed something up and they keep trying to fix it, but it wrecks everything else. So <laughs> all of a sudden there's a ghost town emerging from the ground. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, there's a ghost town that has risen up out of some ocean or some body of water or someplace. And then the murder hornet and then aliens. I heard aliens. Yeah. Aliens. You know the too. Yeah. I can't even remember everything. 2020 is just not so, but I mean, what can we do? We just gotta roll with the punches. That's how I roll. On that note, we're full, and I hope you had fun. I had fun. What do you think of the hot pot? It was really interesting. I almost now want to try all kinds of different ones. <laughs> so fun. It's one of those social activity things like fondue, sushi. Basically, and there is restaurants that do this too. Some nice Korean restaurants that you have the big pod, it could be the grill, iron skillet to Into make the, the grill, the barbecue. Yeah, grill. this is more of a bring the food home to you situation. And you can get this at any Asian grocery store or market. I'm just gonna ask, like where the heck? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, you can get it there. Uh, it's reasonably priced. It's not a big messy deal, pretty easy. 
We added some special broth, like hot pot broth in there to add some flavor. This one in particular, we had shrimp. But there's some spicy one, there's tomato, the mushroom soup wise. Just add flavor when we put the veggies in there. You can have simply water and let the natural flavors of the fish balls, the beef and all that do its thing too. But some people like a little flavor, right? I'd be obsessed with throwing veggies in. Oh my gosh, I love veggies. I would just throw all just kinds of veggies. veggies yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Anyway, if you have any questions or video ideas for a future video, questions for future Q&A videos, you can comment them down below or send me a message. It is at Kick It With Kelly on Instagram. This is what it looks like. Obviously, if you're on YouTube, on Facebook, it's Kick It With Kelly. Pretty much everywhere. Send in your questions. I am ready to answer anything health, wellness, body image, weight loss, or fun, scandalous, personal. Doesn't matter. It's always open book time for me. And please subscribe to this channel. Subscribing really is where the support does come from. Please share the channel because like I said, more than 90% of any health, wellness, or body image issue can be helped with this channel. If you would like notifications of each time I post a video, please hit the little bell notification icon down there and you will be notified every time I upload. And thank you so much. No, thank you for inviting me. This was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. So until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life. Have super amounts of fun trying something new like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.